Hello, everyone, and welcome to our engineering short webinar here today at MOT. Today, we'll be talking about reducing catalyst costs with high efficiency particle filtration. This is a flagship application of MOT technology. We help many customers, such as hydrogenated oil manufacturers and active pharmaceutical ingredient manufacturers, achieve significant cost savings. Um, upwards of six figures every year by helping them capture more catalysts in their process. Today we'll have Brendan Perlman, our project manager here, talking to us about this uh, type of application. Brendan, do you want to say hello to the audience real quick? Yeah. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today, Dan. Um, I look forward to discussing this with you. All right, and we look forward to discussing it with you as well. So, Brendan, I know you uh, work a lot with our customers to achieve significant cost savings in their process by helping them remove or reclaim uh, more of these catalyst fines that are, are very expensive due to the rising costs of precious metals. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the trends you've seen with some of our customers in terms of catalyst costs and why they're coming to MOT to uh, filter out more of these particles? Yeah, yeah, I sure can. So with precious metal catalysts in the past few years, we've seen a steady increase in price. And as you can see on screen, the price per ounce for uh, as especially palladium has more than tripled. Uh, and this has accounted for a sharp increase in the customer requests that we're seeing and the cost savings that we're seeing with those customers when we employ our porous metal media. Um, generally, you can expect as much as 10 to 20 percent in savings when we install a high pulse LSI filter system to remove precious metal catalyst from a liquid feed stream, for example. Yeah, I know a lot of these customers are using things such as platinum on carbon, palladium on carbon. Those are probably the two most common. Rhodium is probably a little bit more rare, but the cost of it is, is making it much more important for a customer to achieve uh, better filtration. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And with this better filtration, what our customers see is better reclamation, better recycling, and overall just increased savings. Um, and as you just said, it's it's extremely significant uh, with the value of this precious metal catalyst today. And I know when a customer approaches us, they're trying to get a general sense of how much money they can save by switching to a MOT system. Now, typically our systems, uh, due to their advanced nature and their advanced technology, they're typically more expensive uh, on initial investment, but they produce quite a bit of uh, return um, in as soon as the first year. So I know we have this basic formula we run through. Can you explain to the engineers watching how they can simply calculate uh, just kind of a rough order of magnitude, uh, how much they can save by upgrading their filter? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So as you can see in the table here, we typically expect 99 to 99.9% .9 of catalyst retention during uh, single pass filtration with our media. So if you're looking at, if and if you know the catalyst spend that you have for an annual uh, operating year, and you take 99% of that, uh, the lower end of what we'd expect for catalyst retention, and then subtract the that same catalyst spend times the, the filtration efficiency you would see with your currently existing filter type. Um, so ex for example, a $3 million catalyst spend and our 99% solids retention, compared to the uh, catalyst retention of a filter press, you'd be seeing over nearly half a million dollars in savings annually. Yeah. and, and my Technology does employ the porous metal technology, which is a barrier filtration uh, system, which has some additional benefits in terms of operating efficiency, safety, et cetera. Um, but in addition to that, we are getting uh, upwards of 99% efficiency, which when you look at the previous slide, um, the, just the extravagant cost of these precious metals makes it extremely important to maximize your filtration efficiency. Would that be correct? Absolutely. Yep. And, and as you said, there's there's more benefits than than the, uh, the the solids retention for our porous metal. Uh, online operation is is automated. Um, safety is is mitigated by the ability to operate that that system automatically. And, and also um, clean in place operation. I mean, the the savings and the operator um, mitigation of of risk there is you know huge and and sometimes intangible. 
Um, but I believe there is a very tangible benefit that you can get from our porous metal um, from that uh, installation. And porous metal, um, as we notated on the previous slide, has a bunch of additional benefits. Um, we had already talked about the very high filtration efficiency, allowing you to capture even the smallest of particle finds um, and, and recover the most catalyst you can as possible. But additionally, there's some other benefits. Can you explain to the audience what they could expect to achieve by installing a porous metal filtration system in their process? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So typically you know, we, we see around 20 ppm solids retention, um, but that is on the upper end of what we'll see in a typical application. Um, unless there's significant catalyst attrition, we can get down into the, the single digit ppm range. Uh, and you, all you're getting there is just additional cost savings. Uh, aside from that, uh, we typically, and, and to the best of my knowledge, rely on single pass filtration. Uh, we don't typically recirculate with our standard liquid filters. Um, and you know that only just helps to optimize that cost savings and operational efficiency. And in all but the most difficult applications, we can get rid of filter aid. If there was a previous technology requiring filter aid injection, we don't need that with our filters. Um, in some cases, we do require this, but typically we do not see the need for filter aid. Um, as I mentioned in, on the previous slide, this is a, an enclosed system. It's automated. We, we can do and design control systems to, to keep that operation automated. Um, and there's no need to remove elements constantly for cleaning. Uh, external cleanings happen um, on a semi-annual to annual basis, depending on the application. But for the most part, clean in place allows us to mitigate that need. Um, aside from that, some additional benefits here would be the improved uptime with no rotating parts. There's very low maintenance requirements for the, these systems. And there, you know we don't employ impellers, we don't employ pumps. We rely on, uh, a, call it a brute force, but it's a simple system and it works. And that's what we use. And then lastly, uh, we've mentioned it before and we'll mention it again here. Uh, we, we oftentimes see more than a 99% by weight catalyst recovery in our filtration systems. Yeah, and we achieve that by getting down to uh, typically sub-micron filtration as small as uh, 0.2 micron, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Our standard media grades actually start a little bit tighter at 0 0.1 micron. Um, and that is a nominal pore size, but we can get filtration at that level. Um, and, and you know, we can for the for the biggest finds that we that we uh, that we'll see, we can go up to two, five, ten, twenty micron. Um, so pretty much any solids are in our ballpark to capture. Okay. And I know we like to start with what we call a filter feasibility test, and and. Uh, we like to refer to this as almost the uh, insurance policy, right? Nobody wants to go through a massive CapEx process where they yep. make a decision on a filter and it doesn't work. Um, so uh, we like to prove it uh, upfront uh, months, sometimes years ahead of time before installation. So can you speak a little bit about the filter feasibility testing process, why it's important and what a customer can expect to receive from this? Yeah, yeah, no, I certainly can. So with our filter feasibility tests, what we'll do is we'll take the, the sample provided to us from the customer. Um, we'll perform a whole number of tests. So as you can see here, we do catalyst recovery percent by gravimetric analysis of the filtered um, process fluid. And we'll also do particle size distribution analysis. So we have a Hariba device that we can do PSD analysis on, and we'll provide that report to the customer as well. Um, in addition to that, they'll get a EDAX report, which breaks down the actual material composition of the solids that we are filtering. And, and you know, in a lot of cases, customers don't necessarily know what they've got. Um, so sometimes we found that uh, maybe you don't have as much palladium as you think. But either way, you'll get an extremely um, important and helpful breakdown of what is inside of the fluid and the solids that we're filtering out. Uh, aside from that, we get a lot of great information in our little pilot scale uh, unit uh, on what kind of flux we can run at. Um, so this helps us to size a, a commercial or, or a larger pilot scale vessel for the customer. And, and all of this is to mitigate risk. Um, as you said, cost to the customer, but also for us, our designs 
rely on some level of um, dependence on these filter feasibility tests. And, and while we have, you know, years of experience in sizing filters, there's no uh, replacement for you know hard subjective evidence like this. Um, in addition to the operating performance, what we'll also be able to provide the customer with is what kind of filtrate quality we saw in the feed and the filtrate that we that we got from the sample, um, so that they know what to expect when we scale up to pilot or commercial size filtration devices. And then finally, just the backwash performance of the filter. You know, one thing I mentioned earlier is we don't exchange or remove elements for cleaning. We leave them in place. And so understanding, you know, can we get rid of the filter cake that forms on the inside or the outside of the elements for that matter? Um, and how effectively can we do that? That's all design consideration for later on in the process. You know, this is why we refer to it as almost the insurance policy is you get all of this data up front. Um, and especially the important part here um, is the catalyst recovery percentage, which makes it very easy for an engineer to go and make a return on investment capital expenditure case to their, their finance department or their CFO that says, um, if we upgrade to X, we will get Y. Um, so it makes it much simpler to quantify the cost savings ahead of time before installation. And additionally, there's not a whole lot of material that's needed in order to get this sort of testing started. Um, can you explain to the audience real quick what we need to perform a filter feasibility test in our lab? Yep, yeah, no, there's there's not very much at all. So one gallon is typically enough, or one gallon or four liters, I should say, is typically enough of the representative feed slurry for our lab to do its thing and, and get results that we can use for scale up. Um, in addition, we, we ask of, for one liter of existing filtrate to compare to. Um, so we know, you know where the goal is and maybe if there's an existing technology, what we are striving to beat. And then finally, for safety reasons, we would like to see SDSs for any feed samples that are being sent into the MOT lab. Um, those go through an approval process and help us to understand if there's any precautions needed to be taken before entering the uh, filter fe feasibility testing. Yep, it's a pretty bread and butter process for um, transporting chemicals, I'd say. Yep. Um, so just to recap our engineering short webinar, um, Brendan, can you take us through just the past 10 minutes we've talked about this, just the key takeaways that you want the customers to have when they walk away from this uh, webinar? Yeah, yeah. So in this in this webinar, we know we've gone through what's driving this need for uh, more advanced filtration technology, and, and that is the rising and steadily rising costs of precious metal catalyst. Uh, we've been getting a lot of inquiries from manufacturers recently um, and vendors trying to figure out the best way to reclaim that catalyst, and oftentimes it's through single pass barrier filtration with our systems. Um, so we expect that trend to continue, and you know, customers, if you're looking for an advanced technology and, and simple operation and reliable, I think porous metal is the way to go. Um, maybe a biased opinion, but um, I think that is the truth in this case. Um, and then we talked about the mop porous metal. You know, what is the advantage of it? Uh, and with single pass filtration, we typically get 99% or better catalyst retention. And what this helps customers do is, is um, you know, improve profits and operating costs when they look to recycle or reclaim that catalyst. Um, and overall, you, you would see a reduced catalyst cost by 10 to 20 percent, which just helps the operating efficiency and profits for the end user and customer. Um, and then lastly, we just spoke about it, the filter feasibility testing that MOT does as a step to mitigate risk on our side and the end user and customer side. Um, it's first to ensure that you know porous metal is right for the process and then second to help scale up whether we're looking at a pilot scale system or a full commercial size this is the first logical step to take in that process. So I, I, yeah I think the synopsis here is if um, you know customers spending a lot of money on catalysts and they have an antiquated filtration technology it's it's almost certainly a no-brainer to upgrade correct? Absolutely yeah.
So thank you for attending our short webinar today. Um, in the future, we'll be releasing a few more of these short topics. Our intention is just to keep these to 10 to 15 minutes. If you have any specific questions regarding your process, we have Brendan's email right there. You can reach out to them directly and he'll be happy to help you and answer whatever questions you have. Um, Brendan, any final parting words for the audience today? Uh, nothing, nothing too long, Dan. I, I appreciate your time here and I appreciate everyone else's time who's viewing this. Um, I, I do look forward to hearing from you on you know, maybe your problems and what kind of solutions Mott can offer. Yeah, and we appreciate your time too, Brendan. So thank you everyone for attending and have a great day.